correctly. Okay, there we go. So welcome everybody to Professional Networking Now, where we build, we're building lasting relationships. And I'm not gonna, it's not gonna go. Oh God. <laughs> Sometimes you're gonna hit the arrow and it goes forward. So just a little bit of uh, maintenance for the meeting. We ask everybody to be kind. We know everyone is busy, but please try to stay engaged. If you decide to step away, please turn off your camera. Please keep yourself muted unless you are speaking. And just a reminder, as you heard, the, this meeting is being recorded. So be careful what you say. <laughs> um, we'll start out the meeting. We're going to do 60 minute introductions, just uh, what you do. And remember to say what's a good referral to your, for you. Also, um, put your info in the chat as well. And then make sure to hit those three little dot buttons and you can save your chat so that you can be able to access that information after you leave. So this week for our 15 minute uh, speaker presentation, we have Michelle Powers of HempWorks uh, today. Michelle would be talking about our hows and whys of our story. So this will be part one. I believe it's, we have three, three parts, right? So when it'll, this will be part one, next week will be part two, and the week after will be part three. So this is going to be really fantastic. I'm excited about this. And then for 10 minute helpful hints this week, we have April Van Tassel of Infinite Digital Marketing and Web. April will be talking to us regarding the social media do's and don'ts. That's definitely, we all need to know those. <laughs> and then We'll go into our weekly announcements. We'll open up the floor. So if there's anything that you have going on, deals, events, sales, uh, any causes that you know that you would like to promote, um, just go ahead. This will be a great time to share that. Um, and then also make sure you put it into the chat with any links that you might have. Then we'll go into breakout rooms uh, where we will, this week's topic will be, um, what is one thing you'd like to learn about that could help your business? So this could be a really good opportunity for us to get some ideas for future meetings. Um, but then, you know, maybe somebody here might be able to help you out with something that you are, are looking to learn that could help your business grow and thrive. And maybe learn how to spell. Well, that too, but I didn't say, I wasn't going to say that. You type <laughs> fast, it's all good. <laughs> it's my nails. It's my nails. Yeah. Then we'll go into, <clears throat> all this is when I'll stop recording before our free for all, but after the, after the breakout room. And this is really an opportunity for us to just kind of brainstorm and have creative discussions, talk about other things that maybe uh, are affecting our business that we could use a little bit of uh, group thought brainstorm about. So and that's it for right now. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, so we're gonna start out. Hi, Andrea, you snuck in. <laughs> hey, Andrea. How are you? Hey. How are you? Good. Hello. Good. I like to see we have some faces today. This is nice. Yeah, this is great. So let's get started. Um, looks like Richard stepped away, possibly. So I'm gonna go to Brenda. Brenda, if you oh, there's Richard. Let's go to Brenda. Then I'll go to Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, good morning, Brenda Otto from Sunray Travel. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I did a week tour down in Mexico. I visited 19 properties in eight days. Um, it was actually amazing. Um, I met with some 
beautiful properties, uh, management companies, which really is, gives me the ability to, you know, send people to some really beautiful places um, where they can actually enjoy a great vacation. So, you know, people right now with everything going on, you know, and cost of gas going up and airline tickets and things like that, everything is starting to become out out of reach, but there are options and um, that's what I'm here for is to find those options for you. So um, clients that I'm working with right now, um, right now I'm doing um, a group that's going to a wedding. So I'm taking care of booking the block of rooms for the, you know, the people interested in going and honeymooners. Um, the honeymooners are going to go on their honeymoon regardless of what's going on in the world because that's not that's an event that only happens once in a lifetime for most people. So, <laughs> so people really need, so people need, you know, a little bit of advice or they need guidance on where they want to go, what they want to do. And so for, for me, me for, Brenda, ahead. for me, fourth yeah. time was the charm. Okay. Okay. Well, there you go. So you, you get to go four times, which is, you know, wonderful. So, uh, <laughs> But when I work when I work with clients, what I do is is I listen to what it is that they want to experience because this event is about them. Um, so I, you know, listen to what they want to do, what they want to get out of it, what what their ultimate goal is, and how they want to have that great experience. And then I match the property to that person and get them going on their way. I take care of all the arrangements for them, so flights, property, transportation. Um, you know, excursions, uh, candlelight dinners, whatever it is that they're expecting to do. If they want to do, um, you know, massage treatments, I can I arrange all of that for them. All I ask them to do is just pack their bags and be at the airport on time. That's really pretty much, you know, the only requirements that I ask. So um, the referrals for me are people who are still looking to go someplace and just, uh, you know, just have a great experience and just get away from all this stress. Those would be great referrals for me. Brenda Otto with Sunray Travel, your next destination starts here. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. That was fantastic. And Richard. Uh, good morning. Rich Lapino, President and CEO of Infinity Development, a full stack web development agency. And, you know, a lot of small businesses like to say, hey, uh, I have a website. It's my Facebook page. Well, you know, about three weeks or so, Facebook went down. So guess what? So did your so did your so-called web page. That's really not your web page. It's really not your website because Facebook could change the rules anytime they want. In fact, they could even sit there and say, you know, you're in violation of our policy and shut your account down. And whenever they do that, your your website is now affected because it's not in your control. Really, you want your own website, your own assets, so you have control of what's going on. If policies get changed, because you want them changed, of course, you're never going to kick yourself off your own website. So if you have a small business that says, oh, yeah, I, I use Facebook or some kind of social media as my, my website, uh, I'd like to have that conversation with them. And as always, a great referral for me are marketing agencies and public relations firms, because they kind of work on that front end and make it look and sound and all that. And I get in the back end and, and uh, do the dirty work and make it work. Fantastic. Awesome, Richard. I definitely, when April came in, I was like, April and Richard need to talk. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly go to Andrea. So have you do your little intro, Andrea? Okay. Hi, everybody. Yes, um, I'm Andrea Miliani, and I am a parent connect coach. I help moms, single dads, caregivers. Um, anybody who is raising kids with ADHD or anxiety or just has not necessarily the diagnosis, but they have symptoms of ADHD and challenging behaviors. And I'm also a leader in a company. It's the mental wellness company. They're called Amar, Amari Global. And I just, it totally, I love these products because they're all natural. And they are extremely good for people with anxiety and motivation and just, I mean, you're literally losing weight is a factor on there. And it's just all natural protocols and supplements. And that's me. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. And 
April. Would you like to? Hi, everybody. My name is April, and I'm the owner of Infinite Digital Marketing and Web. So we're kind of a one-stop shop agency. Uh, we do everything. We definitely do the social media. We do email marketing, SEO, you name it, we do it. Um, so we do do websites, but you know, some websites I definitely don't do. So I definitely love, we love partnering with other website companies. So that's a big thing for us. Um, but we are there to do the marketing for you so that way you can get seen online and offline, get leads into your door and grow your business and revenue overall. Cause that is the ultimate goal of being a business owner is growing and prospering. So that's what we help you with because you didn't start your business to be a marketer. That's what we come in for. You get to focus on doing what you love. Um, great referrals for us. We love working with, you know, bookkeepers and accountants, CPAs, and especially now, you know, getting into tax season, you want to start getting people into your door. Um, any type of attorney, specifically, especially uh, tax attorneys now too, because, you know, we're getting into the tax season. We also do dentists and any type of specialty doctors as well, like veterinarians, podiatrists, endocrinologists, ophthalmologists, things like that, and chiropractors. Awesome. Thank you. It's very exciting stuff. So, <laughs> and let's get Susan, your turn. Oh, you're still muted. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So, hi everyone. Good morning. I'm Susan DeRobertis with uh, SDR Consulting, Success Driven Results. So, I help you overcome the stress and overwhelm of your business by assisting you to lay out the next steps. I do that by running you through a six week quick start program, my CEO mindset program, or the generator program, which is all about generating income. So I um, offer a complimentary 30-minute conversation. Please hop on my calendar. But I'll give you, for example, what's going on in the uh, CEO mindset program, which is all about thought, feeling, actions, and results. I help you identify the most significant core problems of your business and I stop you from bouncing around like you're in a pinball machine uh, by showing you how to be clear on the vision of your company and analyze and determine what step you're on, as opposed to looking at the whole elephant and creating a clear path of action based on your top priorities. We take a close look at where you're spending your time and energy to maximize your strengths. And I do that with you by examining your calendar and seeing what you're doing with all your time and energy and why are you doing what you're doing. It's all about return on investment. Then I show you how to make the most of all your efforts. Then we get into problem solving. You're able to solve problems more easily, determine its source, and make the necessary changes. And I provide you with a master plan, four-step method, which I developed, which is thought, feeling, actions, and results. So we are looking at how you're thinking, what feelings occur before and after, and how that determines your actions, the results you're getting, and how you might change them. When you hire me, I send you a survey within 24 hours. We schedule an up to one minute conversation on the same day at the same time for the next six weeks. I set up a Google doc and send you the curriculum. You download Otter and I will send you all of our written and verbal meeting notes. And I also send you the highlights of my written notes. So in six weeks, you've turned around your boat with continued support from me after that as well. So Susan D. Robertis, SDR Consulting, Success Driven Results. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Susan. And next we have Michelle. Okay. Wow, Susan, that's great. I mean, I I I know all that you do, but you just encom you just put some a bunch of other stuff in there. You may have to do another 15 minutes so we can get to know what you're doing more. <laughs> this is great. This is a new program. I've, I've written three new programs based on market research and what people are needing and wanting right now. So it is a quick week, uh, six week. They're all six week programs. So it's a startup, quick startup. 
There's the CEO mindset. It's all about how you think, which determines what you're going to do. And your results are, you know, in the bank account, uh, the ROI. And the last one is the generator. I show you how to generate income in, in your business. You know, I show you how to, how to do it. Rinse and repeat. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. So anyone uh, want more info, I'll put my information and link to schedule a call, you know, and um, it's complimentary. So, you know, yes. great. Yes. Great. Okay. My yeah. pleasure. My yeah. pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Duplication yeah. is huge. I mean, it, you know, you can't build a team without, you know, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago with consistency, you know, mm -hmm. you tell someone go out and make a list of a hundred people, you know, they get so mm -hmm. confused and overwhelmed. You know, if mm -hmm. you just try to do one thing consistently mm -hmm. every day, the end of a year, you've done 365 consistent things. That's going to grow mm -hmm. your business. But mm -hmm. That's great. And that mm -hmm. kind of piggybacks into what I'm doing today about telling your story and your why. So, but um, I'm Michelle Powers. I am a retired speech language pathologist from BOCES and um, where I worked for um, almost 40 years. And my husband was uh, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer 10 years ago. And we started to use um, some natural um, pain reliever, cannabis um, from his oncology nurse. And um, we saw I, the benefits of how it helped him, got him off a of big pharma and uh, just tr treated the last eight weeks of his life very naturally. So it was really a great um, journey into passing away. So my son was very um, intrigued with that. He moved to Colorado. He got into the business, um, got me to try it about three years ago, and um, it was a game changer for me. So I, he researched this company, HempWorks, My Daily Choice, and HempWorks really is just a brand of my daily choice the whole umbrella is and if you think about it my daily choice to be healthy my daily choice to do this do that so that's the umbrella and we've, we've grown into we have nine brands now <clears throat> excuse me and um you know it's just helping other people want to look feel and be better and um that's what i've done i, I so I'm, I'm an advocate for that now also an advocate for pancreatic cancer. This is November Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, that's me in a nutshell. All right, thanks. Fantastic, thank you, Michelle. And next we have Joanne. Hello, everyone. As if you didn't know, I'm Joanne Zagari. <laughs> Hi guys, um, I'm co-creator with Megan for this little networking group that um, I keep trying to drag people into. Um, but you know what? Uh, and this is basically, uh, I'm kind of taking a hiatus from uh, my businesses right now. And uh, I kind of feel like I needed to, and I'm fortunate enough that I can. So I am. And um, so basically this, this is what I've got, uh, you know, uh, a professional networking now, which I just feel could could really be an, an excellent wonderful thing so um i uh, on my little spiel here i just implore everyone to invite as many people as you possibly can that you know are in business uh it doesn't even it doesn't even matter if they're in the same business as you because you know not everybody meshes with everybody else so they might find you know somebody who who they can work with a little better so you know we don't have that kind of competition thing going on so like a bni kind of thing where you can be the only person in your you know business in your industry kind of thing um so uh you know i just implore everyone to you know come in and you know take what they can uh if you can offer uh maybe some training on something that others can uh, uh, uh you know can help others with in their business please uh let us know uh, I know Michelle's going to speak today and, and April's going to do a health for hands. And, you know, Susan, we can probably go back to you, Brent. I'm sure there's stuff you can do. Andrea, Richard, you know, all it's, it's okay. If you've spoken before, it's okay because you may have something else that you can, you know, kind of help people with. Cause that's what we're about. We're about help people. We're, we're helping each other and getting to know each other. And that's basically, you know, what, we are about we're not just you know business coming in here looking for business although of course we are looking for business but you know when you make that relationship um uh, no like and trust kind of comes into play so uh there you have it joanne Gary. <laughs> what was that 
pool our knowledge, right? <laughs> pool our knowledge, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. So, and that, I guess, leaves me. So I'm Megan Romero. I have a bookkeeping company and I also do financial consulting. Um, I am a life insurance uh, licensed agent here in New York, also South Carolina, but I easily can get licensed in any other state non-resident within a week. Um, and I am currently constantly trying to study to get my securities licenses. That's a lot. It's like three or four different licenses, but I'm looking to grow that side of my business as well. Um, so if you know anybody that um, has small kids, April, um, <laughs> or, you know, just bought a house, just got married, those life-changing events, that is that perfect moment that you want to start thinking. Nobody wants to think about life insurance and what that means, but I don't like calling it life insurance. I like calling it income protection because if something happens to you or your spouse, it's a protection that you're going to still have uh, a way of getting their income until you can be able to stabilize yourself and be ready to you know, be in a better situation. So you're not suddenly having to make life altering changes just because you've lost some of that income. Um, but also now's a really great time. There's so many people that are leaving their jobs, you know, for whatever reason. So the vaccine mandates or, you know, just people changing. This is an opportunity people are taking to just change careers. And a lot of people don't recognize that the, um, their 401ks and their life insurance that they had through their job don't come with them. So it's something that you need to be aware of. And you know, especially with those 401ks, you need to bring that with you. So I work very closely with my mentor who does the security side of things until I'm licensed and then I will come under my portfolio and I'll be there. But people need to be thinking about taking that money with them and not leaving it in their old job because it's just going to sit there and not do anything. So, and then just a little side, I have my uh, Shopify store up, megsmerch.com. Come, come on over and check out some pretty jewelry. And there will be nail art soon. Joe, put your fingers up. Do you still have? Oh, you took them off. I did. No, I didn't take them off. They're, <laughs> she they're had fresh. Pretty, she had pretty, oh, she, well, there you go. That's pretty nails too. So okay. I actually just, and I don't have it next. Oh, no, I do. I <laughs> pretty show his nails. I just got an order. So this oh, is for Christmas. Yeah. The nail art. So, and it's, you don't have to go out to get your fingers done by a professional. You could do it yourself and they're pretty. You're going to have to do a live to show us how to, how to apply all that stuff. That You're going to have to do it. That I do. <laughs> but I'll have to do a couple of test runs before I full, fully feel confident yes. to do that. But definitely you know, go check out those places. I'm going to be having a lot of new stuff coming up. Keep an eye out because I'm going to, my goal is to try and have one piece per day at least that I put up on the, on there. So you want to keep checking into the new arrivals. See, I'm listening, Michelle. <laughs> and I have somebody keeping me accountable too. So, <laughs> so, okay, that's me. I went over my 60 seconds. Sorry. You're sick. <laughs> Yes. You always do. I, always do. I have too much to cram into 60 minutes. I know. She just loves to talk. She just doesn't talk, but she loves to talk. It's a nervous ramble at this point. <laughs> but anyway. All right. So let's, let's dive right into the main event of Michelle to tell talk to us about the, the how and why of our story. So Thank sorry. you. Yes. And as I, there's eight of us and we, by the time we stopped uh, jibber jabbering in the beginning and, and with your first pre pre uh, presentation, we did this in about 18, 20 minutes. 
So that gave each of us about two or three minutes to tell our story, which is where you kind of want to be. But um, we started this, I don't know, what was it, gals and guys, uh, probably five weeks ago, I had taken a class by uh, Pat Quinn and um, Eric Worry, and they just, the importance of telling your story, telling your why. August because, 20th was the day. Pardon me? August of, 20th. Was it uh, really that far away? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so a little bit of time ago. So I put it in our chat. And then I don't know what happened. We didn't really follow up. So I figured let's start over. And there, you know, there's four parts to telling your story, which I put in the chat. Um, and the most important thing we want to do is like when the girls say, you know, tell us what a good referral is. Tell us about what you, you do with your business. You have someone um, as a captive audience when you first meet them, you have them for about one minute uh, to, to kind of, you know, reel them in and get them, they call it like um, elevator uh, co conversation. And when you talk about yourself, facts tell, but stories sell. You want to engage them with what your story is. So the, the parts to your story is you start from your head and you lead it into your heart so that they kind of see an inside of what you're all about. So my beginning of my story was you know, my husband was diagnosed with a terminal illness. We went the regular route with, um, you know, morphine and big pharma. Um, we saw some side effects with that. So, you know, there's my background. Why did I start to get into this business? I saw his health deteriorating, not only from the chemo, but the side effects of what his uh, medication was. Um, th the uh, three things I did not like is I did not like the second um secondary characteristics that were happening to him. And then the solution, his oncology nurse said, you should try uh, cannabis. And she said, I could give you a script for the medical marijuana that was legal in New York state. She said, but it doesn't work because it's synthetic, it's man-made. So he, she said, have your son go buy some marijuana and extract the oil. And I'm like, all of a sudden, ding, 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 ding. I'm a New York state teacher. I can't have pot in my house. What am I going to do? So, you know, my, my pain point was I was stressed, but I knew that it was probably the better route to take. So then I um, had my son do that. He extracted the oil and we made pot butter, as you say. And we, Patrick took that every morning with his English muffin and increased his appetite. It uh, took away his negative feelings. Um, we got him off of uh, morphine, which was slowly killing him because he wasn't able to eat. He was constipated. It was so many side effects. And I don't know if anybody is a Netflix, Netflix watcher, but the new dope sick that is out now with Michael Keaton about the opiates. Oh my gosh. It is so, it, it's, it really is thought provoking about what I think that's big unfair. pharma controls so much of what we put into our body and what FDA allows us to put into our body. And um, it, it's not all natural. So my goal was to start raising awareness about this. And then that's when my son uh, told me he had researched this company, My Daily Choice Hemp Works, and it was all natural. It was farmed in America. Um, and it, you know, so I started, I said, well, you know what? I have a passion, so that's what I wanna do. Um, now that just took me about four minutes to tell that, but I was kind of explaining in between, but what you wanna do with the four parts, and that's why this is gonna be three parts when I do this. Today, I'm gonna to give you again, the, the four parts and explain about them. So this week, and I know it's gonna be a busy week. Did we decide to have one next week with Black Friday? or we're canceling that. So we won't, so you'll have two weeks to kind of get, pull your thoughts. Don't worry about doing it next week because you've got family and all of that. That's more important. But the week after, you know, maybe I'll put a little tickler in the, in the chat, have you start working on it. But the first part of your story is your background. You want to talk about where you are or where you were. Okay. Not where you are, sorry, where you were. And then um, keep it under about two minutes. What were you doing before you started your business? The second part of it is you want to name three things about your story that you didn't like. So my three things was I didn't like the side effects that my husband was getting into. I didn't like that he was not being able to, you know, 
uh, stay awake. The morphine was putting him to sleep. Um, and then you want to talk about those pain points a little bit. And then you want to say, and a friend, my friend was my son, introduced me into a business or a need for a business of raising awareness of how cannabis can be helpful because it's from the earth and there's no additives, there's no preservatives. Literally, it's what the Native Americans used to use years ago. And when prohibition came in, you know, they said uh, alcohol is terrible. So they threw everything out in, in the 30s and the 40s. And when they did that, you know, hemp went out. Well, think about it. Hemp is natural. Farmers, there's so much that you can get from hemp. Farmers used to grow hemp. Our cows ate the hemp and we ate the cows. So a lot of diseases we have now, we didn't, they didn't have in the 20s and the 30s before it went out. It was a natural farmed um, product. And the good thing about it is with uh, the Farm Act of 2018, they legalized hemp back to be a legal uh, farm, uh, farming product. So it's helping our farmers. It's giving, because you know our farmers have been suffering. It's giving them another whole way to uh, earn money and to help people. And um, it's coming back around, but FDA still has the claws into it. You know, they, how much of part of the THC can they put in there? What's legal, what's not? You know, you have medicinal states, you have recreational straight states. So they're still hen pecking that, but you know, it's a process and, and you know, we'll, we'll just wait for that to happen. But after you talk about the three things in your story that your pain points and that you didn't like, the third one is the solution. So the solution was a friend told me about an opportunity. How did this help you? And what did I, I uh, like about it? Uh, you want to lean in when you're talking to somebody, when, you're, when you kind of talk about your passion of why you're getting into it. And then the fourth part of it is how do you feel about the future? How is this helping you with the future? And when you do this, you can hear other people's stories when they tell you, and you can kind of pick and choose from those. Um, so I I mean, just what we hear here in the first um, 15 or 20 minutes of us starting on, I can hear stories from you guys and I can tell other people who might say, gee, that's something I might want to do. I'm in this group. We do this. There's certain people in here who have these skills. So that's my um, listening and learning from you all could end up in a referral for you. So, you know, you kind of pick in, from the stories that people um, are telling on here. So. The most important thing about this is you want to talk about what you're doing now and what it's allowing you to have a time freedom, ability to stay at home, ability to be home with my baby, like April does, you know, ability to, and, and Andrea, I know you're, you work out of your home also, the ability to just do this from the confines of my home where I can kind of work on time management and I can also do things around the house and I don't have to go out to do a nine to five. And um, I, a lot of times what's happening now is we used to be a brick and mortar type of economy and, and situation. And with COVID came, it definitely changed a lot, but it was kind of leaning that way before COVID. But now since COVID with people with the shutdown, now it's a click in order. People are clicking in order now online. Uh, they're not really going out to big stores anymore. And, you know, that's in, either, you know, good or, or so good. The reality of it is people are ordering from the confines of their home. So, um, and doing work that way. So um, some four types of stores, one would be your story. The second would be your company story or the people that you work with their story. And, um, the next one would be if you have an upline or a downline or a sideline, their stories that you can build upon yours. And then the fourth one um, is kind of a, um, a mirror and match. Wow, it sounds like you would looking for this. I know of someone who does that. So it's kind of a, you know, a, a referral part of your story that you can, you can put out to people. 
So what I'd like you to do within the next, you know, two weeks, but don't worry about next week. Next week's all about you guys and family is just start putting down notes. Where were you before you started doing a, your own business? What made you get into that business? What have you gained from being in that business? And then what, what the future holds for you. And then we're going to just kind of listen to each other. We're going to try to be um, uh, good listeners and say, wow, that was great. You, you got me on this. You lost me on that. Um, because I think if, if we're all in here in, in uh, constructive criticism and suggestions, we can help each other. That's what networking is about. And um, then we'll perfect it in the third week of doing this, where we will come back and we'll hone in on what work with part of our stories, what didn't, what we needed help with, and we're going to practice it. And I know people go, oh, I don't want to practice. I don't like to role play. I don't like, but you know what? The first 60 minutes or the first, yeah, when, when we're introducing ourselves, you're practicing your story. So what we want to do, like, Susan, you added so much to your story, your intro. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a whole side of her. I don't know. Because, you know, we've heard your story over the you know, past couple of six months that, that I've been, I've been, in. but this just excited me when you had that extra add on. So, you know, there's always, we're always growing and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, bettering ourselves and getting into new niches and things. So share. And that's mm -hmm. what you do at that point. You're not only telling your story, you're telling the story of, you know, Brenda, she was able to, yeah, as a, as a, um, a travel person, she was able to go to eight, I don't remember what you said, eight different uh, resorts in one trip. That must have been fantastic. I was like so envious listening to you mm -hmm. talk about that. That could- Let me call you back because cool. I'm on a webinar. Let me call you back. I'm sorry. What was it, 11? Is that what she said, 11 that she went to? Here I am. Okay. But that could entice someone to want to be do what you do. So, I mean, that that's so what you talk about is- mm -hmm so important because that is what's going to grab them and pull them into you. And then we'll help the ums and this, you know, the, those type of things. And then the one write it down and you practice it, then it becomes part of your repertoire. And then you will just be able to tell, talk about it without having to um, stammer and get stuck on words. It'll just become so natural and it'll flow. Mm -hmm. So my goal um, I'm a teacher. I can't help myself, but I learned this from uh, two very, you know, influential people, Eric Worre and uh, Pat Quinn. And I just thought, you know what? I want to share. I want to teach. I want to raise your awareness about how important our spirit and the why, the why behind doing what we're now, as opposed to before. So, any questions? Oh, great, great. So I'll put that, him that in again. That was thorough. That was good. Yeah, that was, good. That, that was key because uh, the most important thing now that's happening is um, uh, you just can't go out there and say, oh, I'm this, I'm that. You know, you have to tell your story. You have to have the, yes. the, um, uh, the reason why someone wants to talk to you is because you share something about yourself, like why are you doing what you're doing and how do you do it? And that, you know, so you, you uh, re really need to dig deeper. You know, you just can't be superficial about it and say, I'm so-and-so and I do blah, blah, blah. You know, you right. really have to get into it because everybody is on Zoom and everyone is saying the same thing. So what's really going to make you stand yeah. out Right. What's and your hook? Yeah. What's your hook? Right. And yeah. and if you don't express that, just be more be more expressive and share yourself, then people are just gonna you know you just bend into the you blend into the the wallpaper so to speak of yeah. all these box of all these boxes you know it's like oh yeah. you know yes yeah. and it, and it you know yeah. your 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 individual story will change and it'll it'll bend it'll flow. I mean, people might ask me, you know, why was I still consulting at BOCES? Why, are, why am I doing a network marketing and MLM business? Well, I lost my husband 10 years ago. I lost a whole stream of income when he passed away, a whole standard of living. And really what's out there now is people say you should have at least five streams of income 
to bring you into your golden years. Well, I'm 66. My golden years are here. So, you know, I really want to make sure I have at least five streams of income. And, you know, one of them is not as being a widow is I lost that whole stream, you know? So um, that's a hook. I mean that, oh, wow, you know, a widow. So who would I want to- That, that is um, sad. You know, that's a whole, for anybody in uh, like a, a multi-level marketing or direct sales, that's a whole niche yeah. of, of retired people. Yeah. who are in the same mm -hmm. boat that you're in, male or female. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, you think about that, you say, you know what? Yeah, that's like a whole, a right. whole realm of people. And there's a lot of people in your boat that, that yeah. are, that, that has happened to. So that's yeah. like a whole, a whole demographic of people to, to actually, uh, I don't, and to, to use a, a different term, to go after, you know, and, and try to help right. them. And you and not you only help their health wise, especially right. people, not only help them health wise, but help but them you know, yeah. a couple of bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like that. That's part of my story now. Yeah. There you go. That was great, Michelle. That was really, really good. Thank you, Andrea. I, Thank you. It was We're really good. At our, at our Actually, team. I go just want to even mention to everybody this. I just literally got this book. If you can see, probably stick it backwards. <laughs> it's by oh, Donald Miller. Building a story brand oh. goes through a lot what you're talking about. It's clarifying your message. It's amazing. I just started reading it. And it's, I've got to dive into it, but it says something about, look, they talk a lot about the customer being yep. the hero, your customer being your hero. Yep. Just the hero. And it's, I'm, I, it just started. I, I can't wait to really, I just got it. But it's a good yes. little. Put, put that in the chat because that was yeah. another thing we talked about last week yeah. was possibly having a branch off of doing a business book club. You oh, know? okay. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. Okay, cool. Yeah. I will. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to talk about that this uh, this week and uh, see, you know, what we want to do, what mm -hmm. night you want to maybe do this for like an hour. It doesn't have to be like, you know, three hours kind of thing, but I guess just like an hour. Yeah, get a glass of chat. wine or a cup of coffee and just sit yeah. and chat about that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Trans like alcohol? Okay. <laughs> so my bottle of wine right there. See, yeah, there I, I, I know. <laughs> it's sitting there. I don't, I really don't drink much. <laughs> but, I talk a good story. But, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. You know, we're doing the story but, thing. But part, but of yes. your, part of your story is your mindset. Yes. And when you do professional development every day, even if it's just listening to something, a podcast or whatever, when you do professional development every day, your story is also building because you're changing your mindset, which is huge. Yes. And, and I, I will add, interject, and I thought about this last night when I was thinking about the book club. You know, it doesn't have to always be a build your business type of yeah. book, yeah. but it's these self-help books that that help you, you know, strive to, to reach higher, you know, yeah. to, to, to get more. That really... And, and when you're in a group, um, it's just like, and I don't re resort to this, but, you know, in the Bible, it says, you know, when people gather in my name, there's more power, there's more energy. Okay. And you have the same thing here when you're, you're picking out a book for all you're going to read together and then come together and talk about it. That energy comes to you. You feel that energy, even like, even in the Zoom, you know, Definitely. you know, and it's text that doesn't happen, email it doesn't happen. But when you're together like this, or mm -hmm. even in person, which is impossible at this point, but you get that energy, and it really does help you as a human exactly. being. And then it also helps, like it, you may read a book and get these, you know, A, B, C, and D, but then there's other people that are, that are reading it and they get something else a little bit. And so it kind of gives you a fuller picture where, and, oh, I never thought of that, you know, yeah. oh, I didn't see it. I didn't look at it that way, you know, like they, so read it, they read the same thing, but like they might, something else might've jumped off the, the page at them that you missed. So yeah. talking about it kind of, so yeah, that's, this could be good to, we'll kind of get into that a little bit more later. We have enough people here and I want to talk about it before people start dropping. Oh yeah. Off. No, okay. <laughs> no, it's good. Right. So let's get to April because April has her, her 10 minutes yeah. for her helpful hints. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's Megan. I didn't even just no. step on your toes there. It's your we're, meeting. We're co, we're co, so it's okay. <laughs> 
So I'll I'll start the timer, April. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, you have a timer too? Yeah, I have my timer. This um, so I did create a little PowerPoint for it. So I'll go ahead and share that. Woo! So okay, let me just pull it up real quick. So this is the do's and don'ts of social media. And you know, there are just so many when it comes to social media. So I'm gonna share usually the top five that we see. Um, you know, it's social media is a whole animal that, you know, you really have to be careful about what you say, especially when you're a reflection of your business. Um, so the first one would be, we're gonna go into the social media do's. And these are usually the top five that you want to do to enhance your social media pr presence, engagement, and, um, you know, get people to actually follow your page more. So first things first is that I don't see sometimes it's complete all your needed information on your social media profiles. Make sure you have your about section filled out. Make sure that you have your phone number on there, you know, email, your website link, any information that they need about you and your business should be on your social media profiles. Um, there's also a little category section on there for your uh, business and it'll have, um, you know, if you're in marketing services or if you're a bakery, make sure to put bakery, cakes, you know, things associated with your business that are kind of little tags. So when somebody searches in Facebook, because they kind of search like you do on Google, they pick up those keywords. So make sure those keywords are also in your about section, but labeled into those categories as well. So the next slide, so logo and header. So your logo should always be this little profile picture here. And now for your header, this could be a variety of different things, but you want it to basically capture attention. So for Toys R Us, you know, they have their little toys there. And basically you want it to explain either what you do, how you help, or, you know, anything of like your tagline, just something that's going to motivate your audience to say, okay, this is what they do. And this is how they can kind of help me find out what I want to do. So you're kind of using that cover photo um, non-verbally to express what they're going to get from your business. You know, this could be your core values, how you can help them, what you offer, services, products, etc. Now, this kind of goes into what Michelle was saying about stories. It's providing valuable content. And what we mean by valuable content is, is it has to be content. You can't just throw anything up there. Just be like, I'm just going to make a post about my cat. You know, it has to be something related to what they're looking for. So for example, with Megan, with bookkeeping, you know, people might want to know, you know, how do I, you know, can I take an office tax deduction? And she does like a little insert of, you know, you could take an office tax deduction, but you know, you can't use your office as, you know, your workout studio and your office and the playroom for the kids it has to be just for your office. And that's valuable information that a lot of business owners don't know. So her providing that kind of content and saying, this is what you can do, this is what you can't do, is uh, an example of valuable content. It either answers a question, it, you know, provides information, it advises them. Basically, it's something that you're target market is looking for. Now everybody's looking for information. So your website, all of your content provides information that they want. So they're saying, I need help with this. What can you do for me? Or what are you gonna provide for me to give me that information? And again, this can be industry insights. It could be a uh, question and answers. Like here's the most common questions that we get. Here's the answers to it anything like that. It's basically what they want. And you can even be fun with it too. I mean, content doesn't have to be all informational. You can post funny things and be funny, you know, make some of these memes that everyone has out that are, you know, like tax time. You can put some funny, you know, this is me during tax time with my hair all crazy. People love that stuff too. Yeah. So um, it doesn't have to be, just be informational. It can be fun. You can play around with it, but it has to be something that they find of value. Um, another big thing that we always say is make sure your imagery matches your content. So if you have, you know, a post about your favorite milkshake and you have a picture of, you know, somebody eating a sandwich in, you know, a cafe, it's not going to relate and make any sense. 
So everything has to, you know, basically match together. Your imagery has to work together with your content. They have to match, they have to be together. So if you're doing something on a smoothie, make sure you have a picture of a smoothie on there. Somebody drinking a smoothie, something that relates because if it doesn't, it's just gonna clash with each other and they're not gonna understand the message. Um, if I'm getting conflicting things of, okay, we're talking about this and I got a picture of your dog, you know, in the picture, I'm going to be confused and not know exactly what you're giving me, what I should do next, what your business even does. It's things like that, that could really hurt your posting and not give me the results that you want on Facebook or any type of social media. Let's I thought we had another one. Okay. Sorry, we one past. So posting consistently is one thing that you should always do. Now, posting consistently is going to differ business to business and industry to industry. So Facebook has, and Instagram and LinkedIn, they all have these sections of insights that you can go on there and you can view what days are most popular for your posting, what times are most popular for your posting, and you take that data and then you decide, okay, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are our busiest times in the afternoon. That's when we should be posting. And, you know, again, that's going to vary industry to industry, business to business. And that's kind of what we do as a marketing firm is we come in and I look at your insights and say, okay, these are the days you should be posting. These are the times you should be posting and things like that. So generally for Facebook and LinkedIn, we say that you should be posting a minimum of three times a week. Um, the average should be about five. And I would suggest for your personal LinkedIn profile should be at least daily, try to hit that. But I don't, but you shouldn't be doing more than one a day for those kind. You know, there is something that we call in the marketing industry over, you know, doing it. So, you know, if you're putting three or four posts out a day. And, you know, eventually people are going to ignore you. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, they're posting again. I don't, you know, like I'm done. I can't do this anymore. So there is doing too much. So we say for Facebook and LinkedIn, three to five times a week is about average. Those are doable. Don't do more than once a day. Instagram is a little different. Instagram should be done at least daily just because their algorithms work a little differently. Um, I would say if you're going to do Instagram, don't post more than twice a day. You know, Instagram is a platform where you can post more than Facebook and LinkedIn because it's more visual. People are able to retain the information better than something like LinkedIn and Facebook that's more content based where they have to use more energy of their brain cells to read everything where Instagram is just more, okay, I'm looking at a picture. I kind of get what you're saying. And there's like a tiny little blurb under it. So I would say no more than twice a day on Instagram. Now there's something called TikTok and that's a new one. And um, <laughs> it's, it's right now, it's a love it or hate it kind of app right now. So I know like plenty of people love it, plenty of people hate it. Um, there are a lot of businesses that do use it. They recommend at least three to four times a day you should be posting on TikTok. You know, again, this is a, still a brand new app. So we're still trying to figure out if that's good, if people are going to get tired of it, because obviously it's brand new, it's all the big craze right now. So that's, they just recommend for right now, three to four times a day. Twitter is, um, that's an interesting one. I always tell people, I mean, a lot of my clients come to me and they say, well, what about Twitter? And unless you're a big company or like a newspaper where you're constantly having information coming, because it's basically just updating all the time. It's, you do this little blurb and say, this is new and this is new. So it works well for like local newspaper companies or magazines where they constantly have information and material or a big company like Disney because they have so many things going on. You know, they got news every five minutes. So, because you should be posting at least five to seven times a day on Twitter, they say on average. So most small businesses don't have that much information to post and nobody has the time. And also I tell them it's gotten very political. So unless you really want to argue with college students about politics, I suggest, you know, you probably stay off Twitter. Yes, and that's gonna be one of our no-nos coming up. Um, but it is good for branding. So if you do have the time and you wanna take the time to it, it's great for branding, but that's usually about it. Now, some people use YouTube because they do informational videos, instruction videos, 
YouTube recommends you should do it once a week because I think if you do anything more than that, it messes with your algorithms and you're not seen as much. So you want to make sure to follow that and do once a week. So now we're going to get into don'ts. Okay. Just, just to let you know, we're uh, almost just at the end of your 10 minutes. So just, you know, just to get, you know, you can continue. Just want to let you know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it's going all out of order. Okay. So the first one is don't talk politics. Um, I, I think it's pretty much self-explanatory, you know, especially because it's so divisive now, you know, not all your customers are going to like who you like, same thing. You're just going to alienate people and bad PR, loss of revenue, backlash, just stay off of it. And we do see plenty of businesses making this mistake. Uh, separate your business and personal. So that's also a thing. Make sure you have your separate personal. I won't tell you how many businesses or people use their businesses as the personal profile where they're contacting grandma, they're talking to Uncle Joe, they're posting pictures of the wedding they went to for the family event. Keep that on your personal, you know, not everybody needs to know everything about you. Focus on making your business material on there. Don't show your wedding in everything. You know, people don't need to know everything about you. You know, if I can look on your business profile picture and see how many siblings you have, you know, who mom and dad is and everything like that, you're, you're posting too much. Um, don't post just to post. This kind of goes with the valuable content. Some people are just throwing posts up there just to throw something up just because like, oh, you know, I need to get something up every single day. Don't worry about it. Make sure if it's not valuable, don't waste your time and energy on it because it's just a, a time waster because somebody's just going to look at it. They're going to ignore it and you're just not going to do anything anyway. So you're better able to put more time into something better quality. Um, focus on relationships. A lot of times they don't focus on relationships and that is really what social media is more about. Everyone's go sell, 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 sell. Well, they don't focus on the relationship building. Engage with your audience, talk to them, ask them questions, you know, things like that to build that relationship because if you don't, you're not gonna have the loyalty. Building that relationship with them on Facebook is gonna build long-term loyalty in the end. So another thing I see is the trends, you know, I think last year with the bakeries and everything, it was the hot cocoa bombs and everybody was doing it. It's nice to jump on the train, but it's not original. Number one, everybody else is doing it. It doesn't make your brand stand out or your business stand out. And also sometimes people are doing trends that have no relation to their business whatsoever. So if it's not related to your business like me, I'm not going to make hot cocoa bombs and sell them through my business. It makes no sense as a marketing company. Um, so I'm not going to do that. And I don't know why I didn't go to the last one, but um, I think that was it. Okay. So that's pretty much all of the do's and don'ts. Um, don't do the don'ts and make sure you do the do's. And I'll go ahead and shut stop. All right, that was wonderful. Are you? Do you have another slide for us? Oh, we're good. Okay, that was one of. Did anybody have any questions for April at this point? It was pretty informative. That was awesome. That yeah, was great. Was that was really I was great. Like, I'm like scribbling notes. <laughs> yeah, I like I that, that one that. of how many times you should post on like Twitter um, or Instagram. Yeah. I like that. I did take a screenshot yeah. of that. I was like, oh, I need to make sure I can go and refer to that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to send that to me. I like yeah. that. Yeah, so, that's so important. That's so important because when she said too, it's so true about so many people. Oh, I mean, I've been, I have people on my page that I'll see people. I'm like, again, really? Like people are just posting over, like I make it one post a day, one post a day on my Facebook and I'm in my stories, like maybe five to like between five to eight times. I, I'm constantly in my stories more, Yeah. but it's like so important. It's really good. Just awesome information. April. Awesome. That's great. And that I is great. A secret too. I, I actually have two Facebook pages. So They're going to get you. First... They are going to get you. It's going to happen. <laughs> They're attached to two different email addresses. So, like, I should be fine. They haven't called you know, for years yet. So, no, she's smart. I actually, I got, 
I don't know a couple people. other people who did that. I know. I did too. And they shut me both my pages down. Really? Yeah. yeah. Be careful. Yeah. I fly under the radar, but I have I have my personal page that like I have more my friends, my family. That's like my you know that's where I put up like pictures of weddings and this is what I'm doing and political viewpoints and <laughs> stuff like that. I'm not going to alienate anybody um, other than my family. But <laughs> then, <laughs> then I have my personal page. It's sanitized. It's just that's just business stuff, and I always keep in mind. The what I'm gonna write is this I want something I want potential clients or current clients to see and how will they feel about it. That's always I put it through that filter. It's, so it's it's really good information. Very good, very good. Thank you very much. There's there's business pages too. So like people um, I, I wanted to, I just want to interject quickly before people start dropping off as we get, you know, it's 11 o'clock. Um, uh, I wanna talk about the book club issue. And um, I, I'm thinking of like like a Wednesday night, Wednesday evening, say around eight o'clock. Does that, does that resonate well with anyone? Speak now, it's okay. If it's a bad day, just let us all know. <laughs> That's my other book club, but I can move them to another time. No, no, we, we can move it to a Thursday. I don't care. I'm just, I want to pick something. Thursday I want to, I want to pick something and throw it out there. What is a good day for you kind of thing? You know, Thursday. good evening for you. Thursday's, Thursday's definitely better for me. Okay, that's not good for Megan. Okay. Uh, um, Sorry, I have primarica meeting. <laughs> as long as day. Any, any day is good. Basically, the, the only two nights are Wednesday and Mondays are the only ones not. So Monday Thursday, and Wednesday. Thursday, okay. as long as it's not between 7.30 and 8.30, I'm good. Like if we okay. did it earlier. We don't want to get too late either for, for people, you know, on our, our West Coast here. So our M M Michelle, you said Wednesday is okay. What time is yep. yours? Your what time is yours? Mine is at eight o'clock, but I could make it at seven o'clock or I could make it at, at uh, nine o'clock. Are you sure? Pretty, yep, they're Are you flexible. positive? Because you yep. yours is already yep. established. I need to make nope. you move it. Nope, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Okay. Yep. All right. So so let's let's just put something down and um, this coming week is going to be a rough week oh, because fine. it's Thanksgiving week and I'm going to be right. cooking and, you know, making my stuffing, all that kind of stuff. But why don't we start the <laughs> following week, which is, what day is that? I think it's the first December 1st. It's on a Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. So we'll start December 1st at eight. And um, is there what book should we uh, be be reading? That's another thing. Anybody have a, a, a book that they want to? Don't all rush forward at one time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everybody's like crickets, crickets. Well, you know, a, a good thing would to do possibly would be to, to do a poll in our chat and. I, I could come up with uh, two or three books and then majority would rule on that, you know, um, okay. and, and, you know, like think, think and grow rich is a, is a, is a, a, a mainstay. They that is good. A whole, um, they have rich dad, poor dad is another one. That's yep. mindset thinking yep. and Grant, Grant Cardone's uh, the 10 times rule. Yep. Yeah. Which is really yep. good. So there's three right there. If we kind of like think of book, book club books, ahead of time so it gives people the chance to order them and awesome. get them and read like, them. Also, <laughs> yeah. so. also another good book is um how to win friends and influence people yeah that's a really so maybe what we'll do is we could ask people to just throw out two books that they've enjoyed and mm. then we'll get what, a library I, of books well, i find michelle you're going to put it out there and no one's going to say anything oh, <laughs> you okay. know so okay. i think we should just come up with you know, three or four book titles, put them up there with a poll and see who, who answers. Okay. All right. Okay. Does that sound fair? Yep. Go ahead, Meg. Is it, okay. I don't know about other people. I'm pretty busy. <laughs> do we want to do this once a week or do we want to do this 
a little more spread out once every two weeks, kind of give people enough time to read. Sometimes I only get to read like a couple pages a night. So yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah. it feels like, it would, yeah, I got yeah, That would probably be better. <laughs> like a chapter. Like, read yeah, that's all we do is a chapter a week. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. I'm chapter thinking like a whole book in a book in a week. Oh, and, oh, oh no, no, I can't no. Do that. I don't know about that. It takes me a year to read a book. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, like, a there chapter are people who week. can do that. Uh, yeah. Listen, uh, my my else. my daughter Samantha. I said so. I looked at her one day. I said, "What are you, Evelyn Wood?" She really literally went through a book like this in a day, and I, I could do that. comprehended. I'm like, "What are you, a robot? What is that?" <laughs> yeah. So you know, my kids are always surprising me with you know the smarts that they have that they've never used before. Oh, um, they certainly didn't use in school. Um, in any case, uh, so yes, yeah, so it's really like a chapter a night kind of thing. So I let's pick, pick out a book and we're going to put a timeline on that that we need to know by Tuesday. Yeah. Otherwise we're going to pick the book. And right. you know what, maybe just be a couple of us in the group because you yeah. know maybe not everybody is, is into it, but hopefully it'll catch fire and, <laughs> and uh and people will think, yeah, this is cool kind of thing. So right now, so we're looking at December 4th at 8 p. First, you said first, right? First. For some reason I wrote a four, which is a Wednesday. So we're going to put this in the chat and we can put a poll in the chat, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so we'll use those. Do that Because I can't do that part. I know how to do that. Any? Yeah, no, it's so we're gonna use we're gonna use think are we think and grow rich and we're gonna use that one. Well that think? would be one. And I think I I've I've not read the one that Andrea just showed showed. I would love to read that your story. Okay, um, what is the name of that again, Andrea? I put it up. It's uh building a story brand by Donald Miller. Yeah, it's in the chat. It's yeah, it is in the chat. I did put it in the chat. I didn't want to scroll back. That's fine. Ten times rule. And and one more. What was the other one? Uh, the consistency chain. That's the one I did the the um, helpful hints on yesterday mm -hmm. or last. You week. want to put that that in there? Yeah, or the, uh, we're that already reading it though. though. Huh? You're already reading that though. But but I've read it. I've listened to it two times already. I, I get something new from it every time I listen to it. Well, there's also the wind friends and influence people too. Okay, wind friends and influence people. Yep. I think okay. that's a good one. Uh, yeah, that's right. Wind friends influence people. P -O -P -L -E. Okay. Anyone else want to jump in on this? And by anyone else, I mean April, <laughs> Richard, or Susan. Okay. Not no. Maggie. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun calling people out it's yeah. okay, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. no that sounds that sounds Listen, like nobody cares when they call me out so i just call others out <laughs> we do it lovingly Listen, we're only doing this to help your business it's only you know we're not doing it because we love to talk well we do like to talk together but you know it's the idea of you know there are times especially being an entrepreneur that it can be a lonely world you yeah. know, it can, you, and you get to that point, it's like, what the hell am I doing this for? You know, kind of thing. And, you know, it's kind of where I was. So I kind of like just took a, a, a break from, from everything. But, um, you know, I don't want you guys to do that because a lot of you, your business is your business. That's, you know, that's it. So you got to keep it rolling, 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 rolling. Okay. Um, so good. All right. So we'll put that in the chat then. Michelle, do you want to put that in? The, you want to do it? Okay, and invite with an invite everybody. This is what we're doing. Please, we're looking for attendance, um, and then you know put the the date, the date and time, and then your um, you know our choices. Okay, all and right. I'll set up the. I'll I'll actually even set up and meet a, an event, like I did like I do with this. It'll be in yeah. the group. It'll be on our page under the event pages as our, you know, perfect, I'll say, you know, professional network. I, I guarantee you most of us will be able to find it, but it's okay. <laughs> just go, just go to the PNN page and then the events tab. That's the only way I find our meeting every week. I go right. down and, to and, our... Right. And what I will put it on that page too. But then what I do is, uh, you know, 45, 30 minutes before the, um, 
book club starts, I just put it put in the chat. 30 mm -hmm. minutes to book club. Here's the link again. Just because people don't want to nice. They don't, they don't want to scroll back up. They just they, people just don't. They need oh, there's there's a tickler, there's the reminder that and, right and put it right in their mind. Yes. Absolutely. This morning I, I put <laughs> meeting at 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know. Hello, meeting. Time, but... Oh my gosh. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Meg. Go ahead. Go on with our meeting. It's already 11 17. Oh, breakout rooms. Okay. Wait, is it breakout rooms or is it? Yeah, I think we kind of talked about it already. <laughs> oh, kind of. Maybe not. I don't, you know, is there? Oh, well, it. I'll just throw it out there. Is there anything that anybody, you know, would like to learn? To, that could help their business. Like, give us some some ideas. I got okay. Time management and just that time management and organizing and uh, yeah, because I I get yeah I could use a lot of those tips. Trust me, uh, really helpful. Okay, so we need anybody anybody have ideas about time management and organization? Who's here? Megan? All right. That's like my thing. <laughs> That's going to be Megan. And well, we're kind of booked up for help for um, for training. So what? Uh, well, well, yeah, we'll work it out. I'll probably, you know, I can squeeze that in on a day. After Michelle's story stories. Or you could you could come in on a helpful hint for 10 minutes. Here's a helpful hint to two things you could do to for time management. You want to do that? Rich has got to go. There he goes. <laughs> oh, Rich, Rich left us. Yeah, he had he messaged me. I think he thought he messaged everybody, but oh okay. But yeah, I could do it. I could do a helpful hints. I'll do uh, the 17th organization. December 17th. Good. Time management. That's awesome. Anyone else looking for any kind of uh, hints or any kind of help and in, in stuff that would help their business? Or does anybody want to offer? Go ahead, April. Oh, um, I was about to say something I feel I struggle with a lot is pricing is, you know, pricing my services to be competitive, but still provide enough value to where I'm not underselling myself. Oh, that, that is a good one. one. That is a good one. <laughs> a good one. So pricing. You're, you're muted, Susan. Yeah. Hop on my calendar, April. Oh, okay, perfect. We'll have a complimentary on that and I'll, okay. I'll show you but, how. But, yeah. but Susan, if you're good on that, how about you do a, uh, a training on that? Ah, I'll do that as well. Okay. <laughs> April, yes. get, hop on my calendar and yes, I'll. Yeah, because it's going to be, it. it's going to be a while before we have, because uh, Michelle has like the next three uh -huh. weeks. Okay. It's actually four weeks because next week we're not meeting. So, right. uh, mm -hmm. and then, right. So, yeah. um, Megan, did you get Susan down for uh, pricing? Speaking yeah. 17th. Uh, what, uh, what day is that? Um, December? Yeah, December 17th. Okay, December 17th. And um, anyone need help prior to that, please hop on my calendar and, and it'll be specific to you. So um, April, uh, since you brought it up, jump on. Yeah. Okay. Don't wait. Okay. Not overpricing, but not underselling either. Oh That's a God. really good one. That is yeah. really good. As See, you guys good. have knowledge That's that, that you don't even realize you have that could be helpful yeah. to mm -hmm. our group without actually giving away your business either, you yeah. know, but, yeah. but yeah. being yeah. there. For us, oh so God, that's so that's so helpful. I've been like dealing with this like oh, <laughs> so, yeah. so much. I, like, I just, uh, well, I'm offering Andrea. I, I'm offering complimentary conversations about uh, whatever is specific to you. So hop on. Don't wait. You know, because uh, it's just going to swirl around in your head. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. Right. Gets Big in your way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. this is awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. All right. December 17th. I'm going to put that in my calendar. And ladies, I'm sorry, uh, Richard left. Uh, but um, anyway, he um, 
Um, he had a great he had a great introduction today. He really did. He uh, stepped it up big time. So um, I got to go. I have a, a meeting with a client in nine minutes and I got to prepare for that and and be ready. So it was really wonderful to connect with everyone today. Uh -huh. Yeah, Thank you. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you. Mwah. Okay. Thank you. All Bye, right. Susan. Bye. Bye, Bye. And so and then there were five. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then there were five. <clears throat> um, so that'll I think this kind of leads good into does anybody have any announcements, events, anything that they want to? Did you want to you got going on? No, someone else has something going on? Yeah. Just it's Black Friday next week. There's going to be sales, you know, support people um, in the vendor groups. Or are you not doing vendor groups anymore, Joe, right now? I, I am not. I actually have referred people to my friend, uh, Maggie. Maggie, okay. Yep. All right. I jumped so, down you know, Maggie. Yep. yep. I jumped absolutely. down Absolutely. I, um, it just, it too much, too much. Yeah. I, I got completely overwhelmed in my mind mentally and with moving. And now we have to move again, by the way. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. are moving well, towards Orlando. I'm going to have, we, we, we have to, he spends sometimes two hours coming home at night and he gets up at like three 45 in yeah. the morning. So he comes I home. Four, I four is horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. It, it is terrible. So he comes home, has a bite to eat, kind of dozes off on the couch, and then he has to go to bed because he has yeah. to get up, you know, yeah. at 345. Yeah. So I'm like, honey, just another couple of weeks, you're okay. So we did find a place. Good. And uh, so we're going to have to go into the hotel again for about 11 days or 10 days. Hopefully. And then we'll because the place is not water. available <laughs> until December 11th. What was that, Meg? And hopefully a place with better Wi Fi. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. It's, well, it's, it's, no, because the no the Wi-Fi at the hotel, you couldn't do anything. Oh, no, it's the same hotel. I can just, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. yeah, it's the same place because they take the pets. So, yeah, and that kind of thing. So it, it just be better all the way around, you know, for yeah. for us. So um, it's it, it has to be. But that means that, like, I probably unpacked half our stuff. So now I have to pack it all up again. Close, right <laughs> it's but exhausting it's okay and so there's just a lot kept that was coming down the pike at me yes and i just needed to say no i needed to say no yeah i did and that, that could be another whole training on how to say no and how to get your priorities and and to know when you're overwhelmed Wondering. because literally an overwhelmed mind does nothing mm -hmm. it does nothing it shuts That's down exactly what happened i shut down i shut literally down. I mentally shut down. I said, yeah. no, I'm not, I don't want to do this anymore. So yeah. I gave everything over to Maggie as far as events. She took all, all my people who were scheduled for December. And, um, and I said, no, it's just, this is not for me anymore. This is not, it's not good for me mentally. And I, and I just can't be doing something that I don't enjoy. And I right. didn't want to, why? That's why you started Dove you know, because you weren't doing something you enjoyed, you wanted to do something else. And then it got overwhelming. And, yeah, and then it important. got to be, you know, too much Then people were like, uh, you know, pulling, pulling, they were pulling crap and everything. And it's like, you know what, I just, you're all adults. I feel you're all adults. You're all business owners. You need to, you need to act like it. Yeah. You know, you know what you have to do. You come in here, you make your post, you talk to people and you do your thing. You can't come in and complain. Oh, I'm not getting any sales. Oh, I'm not getting, well, go talk to people. Right. Don't tell me you're not getting sales. Just go talk to people. I put you in a group with five, 500 people. If I'm in a, if I'm in an event with 500 people, I'm walking away with 75 new friends. I'll tell you right now. Absolutely. I'm going to reach out to everyone in that group. Not my vendors. I'm going to reach out to people because if they, if they decided to join that event, to join that group, they are open game for and you to like say, mine. hi, how are you? Yeah. Thank you for yeah. being here. And can you please like my business page if it's not too mm -hmm. much trouble? Every single one will like your damn business page because it's like a click. It's a click. They love one click things. Yeah. One, two clicks. That's it. Otherwise, they're just too overwhelmed. They are, I don't want to do this kind of thing. Yeah. And it, it's like, and, and, and I tell these people, Stop putting your, all your pretty pictures up because 
everybody's got pretty mascara and pretty, you know, vitamins, all the kind of stuff. <laughs> Make it interactive. What am I so sorry? You got a pretty picture. What do you want me to comment on? Oh, no one's commenting on my posts. I go through it and I go, what am I going to comment on? It's pretty. Oh, mascara. You know, and yeah. put up like, you know, mascara, lipstick and like, you know, this or that, or put something you know, funny what you use or something like that. Make that people interact with you. You gotta, you gotta make people interact you gotta, and you gotta make it simple. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't have them write an essay about, you know, their favorite color or something, you know, mm -hmm. don't, don't do that. A lot of them, you know, oh, put, put your favorite recipe. It's like, fuck that. I got too much. I don't have time for that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have time for that. No, that's not, I, I, I see what you're trying to do, but. Right. I mean, I mean, this it's is too not long. They don't read it. They won't read it. It's too long. Nope. It's too wordy. Nope. Just the fact, just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Just that, and they want one or two clicks. That's it. Right. Click, you right. know, A, B, C, or D. Oh, I like that. I can do that. You know, I, and, and I, and I try to tell them and I'm telling you over and over and over again, they don't do it. How many times have I been sitting there and we've been like a Facebook chat? She and I like sometimes just sit and chat and then I'll, I'll just, she'll be like, oh, these idiots. <laughs> Somebody's like, yes, like, like I told like, you to do this. And, well, and that's when I go in and I go, and I'm allowed to put in the comment, I don't know what I'm supposed to interact with here. Yeah. I, this has got to be better because it doesn't, it, it doesn't get, listen, the, most people in, in MLM companies, they're not. They're not sales trained people. Right? No. Yeah. Okay. They're not. They went by their upline and said, oh, it's going to be great. You're going to go this money. Oh, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. Blah, 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 blah. But nobody actually teaches them how to sell. That, yep. I agree with that. That's why I've been they in don't, MLL right. for 20 years and having different, like two between two different and haven't had that I had had some success, but not the success that I wanted until I got where I am now because the company that I'm with now has a massive, so that we literally want every once a week, we're on a team call, once a, we're on a social media, they teach you to attract. They give you a, a tech, and now we just upped it to 12 days from seven days, a launch plan when you come on of what to post, literally what to post. Every day, a following people have had massive, with massive success. And that's what it's been. about engaging. It's about asking questions. You have to listen. So many you people have to yeah. listen yeah. to the people. So okay. that I have a, they I have a calendar. I have a, a calendar. I have and a not calendar. just post your products either. Right. So many people, right. that's all they're doing is posting their products. Exactly. But, that's exactly that's, my point. Yeah. They're posting their products, but why isn't anybody buying anything? Yeah. <laughs> that's all I see is put products, products, products. I'm like, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Something else I tell people, you know, why should I buy your $50 eyelashes when I can go to CVS mm -hmm. and get them for $8? Right. You better, you better know your product inside and out, upside down and backwards, because you need to tell me why I'm going to buy yours. And, and the, those are not the ones that I want. You need to convince me and people don't listen, listen to what people are saying. And this goes to even April, you don't have to be an MLM. You're in sales, April. You are selling your business. Megan is in sales. She is selling her bookkeeping business. She's constantly, every time someone, one of her clients wants to talk to her, she's selling them. She's selling them on why she's the best. So this is not just for direct sales. This is anybody in business. They don't get it. You are a sales person. Exactly. You need to learn how to listen and learn how to help people with their problem. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Somebody comes to you, you know, this mascara is horrible. I keep using it, but I still can't see my eyelashes. <laughs> Something as simple as that. You need to come to them and say, well, you know what? My $25 mascara is going to be a lot better than $8 Maybelline. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you what it's going to do. Let me show you, you know, kind of thing. So it's important on all your products that you know why yours is better than what they get. Like Michelle, you talk about it. You can go in the gas station, get CBD for, you know, a couple bucks. Yeah. Or should you buy it from Hempworks, which is companies with American-grown products? 
and it's made here and all sort of kind of stuff. And all I always, and I, and I, and I also say, when you do purchase from me, you get me. Mm -hmm. So you can call me, you can text me, you can write, you know, Hey, you know, I, I'm not feeling anything. Okay. So let's up the dose a little bit. Let's huh? do consistency. Let's do a little bit at a time, you know, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, yes. I sell myself. I just say, here's what I've done. This is what's worked for me. Yeah. I, I post myself using the products. That's mm -hmm. why would they buy from me if I don't show that I'm using it? Exactly. That's yeah. exactly what I do. The same thing. It's like I share, what, I share what I've gotten from it, the difference that it's made in my life. What this, you know, when I, as I show the product with me that I'm using it, or my favorite product that I can't live without, and why, mm -hmm. and what it's done for me. And I, I'm actually, I'm engaged with somebody too that, like from a group that I'm talking to a mom right now. I'm not coming out. Some people were just like, oh, you're having these problems. Oh, here's what you need. And, and, no, I've, I've asked her, what other struggles are you seeing with your child? She's telling me. Okay. And what, you know, it's, it's a, like, what would make a difference if you could do this for your, asking her questions to get more answers so I can eventually lead her to what I think would really work with her. But right. that's what it's listen. about, engaging. You gotta listen to the customer. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's listen. all about, and reflective, reflective listening. You need to fulfill their need. Your uh, product needs to fulfill their need. Exactly. And how and why, and why it's so much better than what they can get at Walmart. Because they can, pretty much get anything at Walmart, you know, uh, as far as I go, well, they can't get web design and that kind of, they can't get, you know, a bookkeeper, but you know, any product she can pretty much, you know, get there. So, and, and Amazon, that's important. Yeah. Oh, Amazon. Yeah. And again, you have this problem with the product. Yeah. Michelle, they're getting you, yeah. they're getting you and, and, and Andrew, they're getting you, you know, you know, in April, they're getting you, you know, I don't know about the company, how they are, but this is how I treat my customers. You know, this you're important to me, and that's really what people want. They want that's a tip, kind of a tip too, right there. You just said it about listening and reflective listening. That's a great tip day, like a tip, like even just to go over and because it's important. Mm -hmm. And when you're listening to people, you can you can say, okay, so what I'm hearing is yeah, that yeah. you know you're 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 not seeing your eyelashes when you use this mascara, or when you're putting the makeup on your face, it just seems to disappear and you don't really see the coverage that you're looking for. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. Okay, good. I, I think I have the, just the thing for you, mm -hmm. you know, or, or Michelle. So what I'm hearing is you had pain in your shoulder and you're not sure you've tried all kinds of things and you really don't want to go on the medication route, you know, big pharma. So let me, let me see if I can help you with this. And, and that's, you know, it's okay to say back to them. Okay. So am I understanding that right? Cause you might not be understanding it. And right. They'll correct you. Huh? They'll correct yeah. you. No, I meant no, this. no, that's not yeah. what I mean. Why I mean this. And exactly. so it, and it just shows you're listening. And so many people don't listen. They just yeah. talk at you. Yeah. Well, what they're, what yeah. they're doing is they're thinking of what's the next thing I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's different than active listening, where you're mm -hmm. pulling parts of what they're saying and reflecting it back to them so mm -hmm. that they go, wow, she really heard what I said, or she really, she's really a good listener because most people are two steps ahead thinking, okay, what am I going to say back to them? But that's really what you don't need to say. You need it means to a lot. It's the same you thing when you're when you're in customer service and you have people, you know, on the complaint department kind of thing, I, I would always diffuse people because I would just stop and I would listen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's all people want you to do. They want you to listen. Right. They just they need somebody to listen to them, oh, you know, I'm, and, and I've had some break. horrible customer service experiences where I'm, I'm sitting there just trying to tell them what's going on. And they kept interrupting me to try and be like, oh, so, oh, I know exactly. How I'm like, no, you're not I'm telling you the situation. You're not hearing the whole situation. Like yeah. they just want to hear like cut to the chase. And it's like, but there's these events that led up to it. There are steps that yeah. have to happen yeah. before yeah. this happened, then this happened, then this happened, and then this is my problem. So it's like yeah. people don't it's, want to hear. These all. are always great discussions we have at the end of our our. Uh, yeah. our yeah, they really are. That's what I, they are. I, I feel bad for the people that jump off because we really do solve a lot of problems. We, the, we they really the do miss out. Things. Yeah, they really do. do miss out at the end. They really yeah. do. 
yeah, yeah. You know, because we're still, I just look, we're still recording. So yeah, we are. Everything we said. <laughs> was, I was going to warn you. <laughs> again, these are not people who listen and who, who want to take the time to realize what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones who, you know, are, are interested in their business and want to, are the ones that stay on and go, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really good idea. And then interject something else again. And somebody goes, oh, I didn't even think about that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So it's unfortunate, but I, I that think that- That free all section is of our, of it is- I think I might want to say something on our next yeah. meeting about- yeah. You know, well, when you hop off early, you miss out on a lot. So a lot of times that free for all goes over in past that 1130 time that we normally over now we're seven minutes over. Yeah. And I know people got, I know people got shit to do. I know you got a life. Oh, I yeah. know you got, you got appointments okay. and stuff. It totally and I understand yeah. this sometimes, but these are the, these are our chronic, uh, hopper offers. Yeah. <laughs> they're, okay. they're always, they're always the same people who hop off and I feel like they miss out on a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's like I at know, least really. once in a while, just try and stay yeah. for a sometimes little bit. And always, sometimes Michelle has to leave because you know she's got a you know a teacher thing going on. Yeah. But you know, if you can hang out once in a while, it's really it. I think it does a body good. Yeah. I, <laughs> I wanted good. to go back a little bit, and so like you guys talk about like engaging with the with posts and stuff like that and but then like there's other types of businesses like mine with the with primerica specifically like that's so regulated it's such a regulated industry between securities i'm not allowed to talk about security Any of that stuff. investments until i'm licensed and then when i like there's four separate, three or four different licensing. So like, I can't talk about anything until I'm licensed in that part, you know? But you know, Maurice couldn't talk about things. He was on here, but he couldn't, you know, give you any meat and potatoes stuff. Well, um, but that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a business. That's not an MLM. You're not an MLM. Your your Primerica is a, a real financial yeah, but the life insurance, we can talk a lot more about that. And that's where like, we, one thing that I love about Primerica is like, they give us these really amazing posts with these really awesome articles that like, that's more on the information side. And like, that's where I was, when April was talking about like, make sure it's value driven kind of content. I'm like, thinking about the primary posts, I'm like, yep, those are, those are value driven. If somebody wants to take the time to sit and read, but like, it kind of takes a little bit of effort on our end that we read the article and maybe like write a little synopsis that'll whet somebody's appetite that are like, oh, I got to read that article. Cause that sounds like something that I would like. Cause just seeing like the title of an article doesn't always give you that draw like oh I gotta read that that's that sounds like something I've got to really but having a little bit of a blurb ahead kind of draw the draw them in to say oh that sounds like an article that I really need to read about like you know the importance of life insurance or you know backing up your income whatever it is you know <laughs> And that is a little more open with the whole, they do more articles and posts that maybe it does have something to do with securities, but I can post it because it's a, it's an article in the New York times or, you know, whatever, you know, so it's, it's not me as much talking about it, but then to try and get that engagement in there. That's, that's where I have a really hard time because I love putting that in there and sometimes I'll get a like or whatever, but then it's like, you don't really get the engagement underneath in the comments as much, which is hard. So yeah, <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> it's a process. It's bookkeeping it's a process. Side. What do I write? You know, but that's where I got it. I got to get in touch with you, Gabriel. And because you deal with people like me, it's like, mm -hmm. that's one of the hardest, because it's not like I can sit here and take a picture of what I'm doing, because it's, it's, it's not, a, it's not a tangible product, yeah, 
Exactly. Well, it is, it, it, you know, <clears throat> the way it is, but you're, you also have to ride a line of like, you can't be showing somebody's personal information. You know, you're, you're, I'm, you know, doing reconciliations all day. You know, I obviously can't take a picture because, you know, I have people's financial, like their bank statements and stuff spread all over my desk. <laughs> so it's like how I've always been in that conundrum of, I want to post more with the bookkeeping, but what, how can I, because it's, it's so like sticky. It's a sticky situation to share that information. So yeah, that's the hardest part. And, you know, it's also, you know, based on like industries, like our industries is we're not there, you know, we don't have like a product that we can show, like, you know, like I do bakeries like I can't show a cake or cupcakes that people could do it's all based on content and you know we're basically selling our expertise and we do that through our content by you know here's some quick tips you know here's some mistakes you could be making here's this so that's the hardest part with our industries I feel big time yeah but I like there's other times that it you know you do find something like I just they just announced uh, a couple months ago that we're going to be able to do payroll as a standalone. So like if you don't have a QuickBooks product, but you have payroll, now I can do payroll without you having to actually open up a QuickBooks account. Like, so there's people <laughs> like, you know, maybe they have a couple employees, but they don't feel ready that they can have a whole QuickBooks subscription now I'm able to offer payroll for that. And it's like, well, how do I put that in a post? I am so not, I, what is it that I always say, Joanne? I'm like, I'm not wordy, wordy. I'm number, number. <laughs> Something like well, You're wordy, wordy too. You're a white, white, right brain as opposed yeah, to left yeah. I, I just, writing a post, like I write like this stuff about like, oh, we're going to have a meeting and here I do like the little, the pretty pictures with like, this is what the speaker is going to be doing. But really, if you read it, I'm really kind of following the same kind of, this is what we're doing and the insert person's name and t- like subject. I'm not like this very creative word smith to like, you know, if somebody else wants to put that in there, I'm like, oh. see, that's, but that's the idea. That's the beauty of like a virtual assistant or, or doing yeah. what April does is she can say, follow this path or follow, you know, go down this way. You could do that. Like my, you know, people tell, what am I going to post? I tell them every day, like today, when I get off here, usually at noon, I say, today's post is a funny one. Just mm-hmm. talk about, just post something funny. Just make someone laugh. Make someone want to come back to you and say, gee, Michelle always posts on Friday a funny thing. I want to see what she's going to say today. If I've made someone smile, everybody knows 300 people. And that means you're going to make them smile. They're going to tell people. And then you're, that's how it grows exponentially. Mm-hmm. You know, but I give them just an idea. Today's post is an educational post. You know, so just write something educational about what you're doing. You I know? miss I think they changed the algorithms with Facebook that like, I don't see as much like the, the posts that say like your friend so-and-so commented on this person. Like that'll come up in my notifications if like, say, you know, I always see Michelle's posted, but then I'll see like, oh, Joanne commented on Michelle's post. I'll see that in my notifications, but then I remember it, not even that long ago, it used to be like a friend of yours commented on somebody's post that you're not friends with. I kind of miss that because I'm like, even though I didn't really care, but knowing like there's a possibility that like, oh, I put up this post and then a friend of mine commented maybe somebody will see that they commented on mine and then engage and then maybe send me a friend request. Like, I wish that there's things that they take that I'm like, no, don't do it. Well, that one training I did on the social five, 
you know, where you, you, you comment on five people who have commented on, on one of your posts, and then you go to their, the, those five people and you comment on their news feed. Now what that's done is opened you up like, well, who's this Michelle Powers commenting on Joanne's yeah. feed? And then just curiosity kills the cat. They're going to go to my, my news feed and see who I'm, what I'm all about. And if I don't have good content in there, they're going to say, oh, you know, she was just someone else. But mm -hmm. that's the important thing is that it, once you make a post and you make a comment on someone who's commented on you, you go to theirs. Now you've opened up to their 300 people to say, yeah. who's this Michelle Powers? You know, and why is she talking about purple? You know, what, what is she talking about this, you know, plant based, uh, you know, uh, oil that magic oil that's helping people? Mm -hmm. and then that's when they're going to dig into you and find out who you are. That's why what I what I do is like a lot of times, like before I post about you spend about 10 minutes before you're going to put Just your going post, through. Yep. Going through, commenting, liking everything. And then after your post, you do another 10 minutes after your post. Yep. And it boosts the algorithm to yep. more people. Yeah, And it bumps it up to the top of your news yep. feed where everybody's going to see it. Exactly. Yeah. And then once or twice a week, go down to all of the posts that you've done that are low, 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 low in your newsfeed, make a comment on someone and it'll bump it right back up to the top. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. This is awesome. All right, I'm all right gonna, girls. Just, I got to go. It's almost noon. I have to make my today's post. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. yeah make your post. Everyone today, yeah, make a funny free. post. Everyone today, put a funny post on your newsfeed. That's, that's the post for today. A funny post. Yeah. Funny post. Got it. Okay. Yes. All, All right. right. Thank you, Michelle. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy um, Thanksgiving. Bye, guys. Okay. I'm going to quickly. All right. I'll reach out to you, Michelle. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye, bro. Bye, Vegas. Bye. I'm going to quickly Bye. 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 Let her wrap up. Let, let, let Megan wrap up first. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Because <laughs> we're still recording. Go ahead. Oh, no. Where'd it go? There it, is. <laughs> there it is okay so i'm not going to go into the big presentation mode but i want to thank everybody for coming in closing we would like to take the time to say thank you for taking part in pnn if you know of any professionals that you think could benefit from joining in with us please feel free to extend an invitation to them in fact we really encourage it um and then everybody is welcome we meet every Friday except for next week uh, at 10 a.m. So Eastern Standard Time. So thank you, Pat. Yay. Awesome. Yay. Actually, Megan, 